As the conflict between the two superpowers solidified, we saw the establishment of the Iron Curtain. In the last lecture, we talked about how they were establishing those spheres of influence, not only in Europe, but around the world. And that desire to spread your sphere of influence, or stop the spread of your opponent's sphere of influence, is known as expansionism or containment. A great example of this is the conflict over Germany, specifically Berlin. Remember the last lesson how I explained that Germany was divided into four sections during the Yalta and Potsdam summits in order to prevent any one nation of gaining this important state is their sphere of influence? Well, the Americans didn't like the fact that Berlin was in the Soviet sphere of influence, so it was agreed at these summits that the city would also be split into four pieces and all four nations would have access through the Soviet sector to bring supplies to their quarter of Berlin. There's two key events that occurred in Berlin that demonstrate that idea of expansionism and containment. The first is the Berlin airlift. Stalin wanted to keep Western influences out of his area, and he felt that the other nations wouldn't be willing to start a fight if he took measures to gain control of all of Berlin, basically playing a game of strategy. So in 1948, he had all of the land routes into the Soviet quarter blockaded. What was the response of the Western powers? For a year, they airlifted all of the supplies to their quarter until Stalin realized he'd lost the gamble and reopened the land routes. Instead of giving Stalin greater control of the region, it led to increased hostilities between the communists and their former liberal allies. It also solidified the Truman Doctrine, which took the United States from an isolationist state at the beginning of World War I and II to an interventionist state in global issues. Now the Western powers were concerned that Stalin was going to be the next Hitler, taking over Europe piece by piece. This is when they created NATO to contain the spread of communism that we talked about in the previous lesson. A few years later, as discussed, Stalin had the nations in his sphere of influence join the Warsaw Pact as a counter to the powerful NATO military organization. So in other words, Stalin's action to expand his sphere of influence led to the strengthening of Cold War conflicts between the two superpowers as the Americans tried to contain them. For about 12 years, things in Germany stayed tense but stable. The Americans, the British, and the French joined their sectors together to create a nation of about 60 million people at its peak, while East Germany became the German Democratic Republic, a communist society of about 16 million people. However, there were many people living in Eastern Germany who were not happy about their living conditions. This is because while the Americans believed that rebuilding the economy and spreading liberal economic and political ideas in Germany would guarantee peace, the Soviet Union wanted Germany to pay the penalty for starting World War II and demanded absolute control of their people. So by 1961, up to 10,000 East Germans were migrating every week. The government couldn't keep losing people because this impacts not only your economy, but the political control over the people. So overnight, the East German government, with support from the Soviet built a wall around the areas of Berlin controlled by the Americans and their allies, hence containment. People were horrified by the repressive move, especially the West Germans who couldn't believe that an ideological conflict between the Americans and Soviets was creating a scar through their city. Many people tried to escape, so the wall was reinforced. The West watched what was happening in Berlin with apprehension, but there were other conflicts going on in the areas of the world like Vietnam that were getting more attention. Tensions in the area would heat up, then cool down. Then, in 1987, President Ronald Reagan came to Berlin and, in front of the Brandenburg Gate, a symbol of East Berlin, challenged Gorbachev by saying if he really supported the ideas of Glasnost, then Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. The fall of the Berlin Wall seemed to happen so quickly. While there had already been fundamental changes in the level of control in the Soviet sphere of influence due to the ideas of Glasnost and Perestroika, protests continued throughout the region. One night in 1989, an East German government official stated on TV that in order to appease some people's demands, they were going to be lifting some of the travel regulations. Before this, you had to have a visa to leave the country. When the interviewer asked when these restrictions would be lifted, the government official kind of mumbled, well, uh, effective immediately. That was it. Thousands of people flooded the gates to get through the wall. The soldiers didn't know what to do. The new regulations were going to be explained to them the next day. In the past, they'd been ordered to shoot. Today, they put down their weapons and the people flooded through to Western Berlin. Families and friends were united. Total strangers became best friends as they celebrated the end of this oppressive symbol of Cold War containment. Within hours, people began dismantling the wall. And one year later, the nation state of Germany was officially reunited after 45 years of division. So both superpowers attempted to expand their sphere of influence while the other tried their best to contain that expansion. This is going to lead us to our next discussion, the proxy wars.